drinker. You you drink. Ultimate Self Defense Championship Season 2 is out and it is amazing. I will show you some of my favorite parts during this episode. Jeff Chan is a returning member from Season 1. If you haven't seen Season 1, make sure to check it out. Immediately, you could kind of see, and I'm going to show this in slow motion. Jeff used a little too much force. So let's watch this in slow motion. Again, it's one of those drunk idiot friends, right, that gets you into situations. Look at how much Matt's face turns when Jeff punches. Look at that. You see, that was hard. And then taking him to the ground. That's risky, too. Thank goodness Jeff didn't tangle with him on the ground. So that was good. By the way, shout out to Natan Levy. If you watched the original, which, again, please go watch the original, Jeff Chan did explain that he just wanted to make it entertaining. And that excuse almost flies. The issue is part of self-defense is understanding the context. I don't accept that excuse, even though it is a very good excuse. I don't think the law, the authorities, anyone's going to be on your side. There was a potential to fight, but you didn't just initiate. You probably really hurt and sent to the hospital both of those people. <laughs> okay, so here comes Jeff Chan in scenario two. By the way, Rook is his wife, one of those people that's involved in this scenario. This scenario, you can't de-escalate. So this is something that I think some of the contestants misunderstood, but you see how they're made to put on their helmets? I think that's a dead giveaway. You're not going to be able to de-escalate this. Watch this. Jeff Chan does a great thing standing up, right? But still he gets hit, man. Dude, punches come so quick, right? So this is a major no-no moment. See, he goes to the ground and then starts getting hit from on top because, again, there's more than one person. So that was a big no-no. And then um, the drunken, dumb friend that sort of is part of the scenario, they, they get out of there. That was great. You see this so much, the tangling, going to the ground or tangling and focusing on one-on-one, -on -one, especially with grappling trained or MMA guys. I remember there was a show back in the day where an MMA guy tried Israeli Krav Maga training in Israel, and it was the same. He would go to the ground in the sand and it was so cringe. And you see a sort of modified version of this where Jeff is so much more skilled one-on-one. -on -one and maybe he could finish it quickly if he goes to the ground. But it's just too much risk, man. You saw in this case, right? Thank goodness the participants, it was all a test. So he didn't get hit too hard from the back. This wouldn't have been pretty if this were an actual situation. Here's a very cool scenario where they're going to play pool, right? So much stuff happens in a game of pool. I've no, personally known a person to have gotten knocked out over a game of pool. He was playing some bikers, though, so not the smartest thing to do. But anyways, again, notice Jeff went to the ground and, again, could have been double teamed, right? So this was not the best thing to do. And then another situation here, lack of situational awareness, both of them. And then once Jeff gets going, right, Jeff is destroying, but then... That slamming his head into the wall could get him in a lot of trouble legally. So there's so much more to self-defense, right? And we can see that Jeff understands one part of it, but there's other parts of it that potentially he didn't really consider. A self-defense situation is not fun, right? It's fun to watch it, but it's not fun to experience it. You have to make some trade-offs. You have to make some split decisions. So you guys let me know, do you think Jeff Chan made the right decision? And now let's watch a BJJ black belt. Here's Mr. Jiu-Jitsu black belt. And again, same situation. Look at that. Notice the drink gets spiked, right? And Jiu-Jitsu guy's thinking about de-escalating. He drinks from the spiked drink. And then this is the same situation. Look at that. They put on the headgear. So notice him not getting up, right? Ooh, starts getting hit. Gets tangled, takes him to the ground. Uh oh. So similar situation as Jeff. The difference is the Jiu-Jitsu guy isn't striking. He's just trying to restrain, which... It's very empathetic, right? But likely you'll get more damage that way. And then this was the pool situation. Again, look at that. Turned his back. Basically, in real life, he would have taken a pool stick to the face. And then it's double attack on him again. Not striking back. Trying to do jujitsu on two people. So this was not good. And takes it to the ground. And again... This is common jujitsu trope. He would have been very effective one-on-one. -on -one, but again, this is not a one-on-one -on -one situation. Look at this. So... This situation, taking it to the ground again, and then look at that. Would have definitely gotten hurt here. Uh -oh. oh, nice. He finally throws a strike. He does try to put one guy in front of another guy. He noticed that. 
But even here on the ground, see, it could have still gone bad. From a self-defense perspective, the jiu-jitsu guy did really bad. The jiu guy would have been really hurt in the hospital. I love jiu-jitsu. This is not an attack on jiu-jitsu, but obviously, if you train a martial arts without a self-defense mentality, sometimes you will get stuck in bad patterns. We see this with everything. Shout out Jordan, Coach Jordan, Professor Jordan. Shout out him testing himself. I'm sure this will influence how he teaches jiu-jitsu. I'm sure this will help him come up with even better things to teach his students. So this guy's the MVP. His name is Craig. He's just a regular Aussie guy. Now, Aussies are a little different than average Americans or average Chinese people, right? A lot of them grow up playing rugby and stuff like that. So an average Aussie is very different than like an average human. I just want to make that clear. Notice how he de-escalates the situation. See, he doesn't drink. He comes up with a valid excuse. This part's awesome, the accidental flirtation part. He does do one thing wrong. Look at this. He doesn't get up like Jeff Chan, right? So he doesn't respond initially as well. And then watch this. He does give his back a little too long, right? I guess in his defense, he thought that his friend had his back, which in this case, his friend did. And then it de-escalates. Obviously, this guy's been in bar brawls. And I love this part. He just leaves. He's like, I'm not doing this anymore. He just leaves. And so for the sake of the experiment, for the sake of the video, he has to come back. I really liked how Craig handled this situation. That's why I really wanted to highlight this. I was in a similar situation in 2016, around the time I started this channel. And again, it was one of those friends that just kept getting us on the verge of trouble. And you ask, why would I hang out with this guy? He used to be a coworker of mine. And he was cool when we hung out, not in a bar type of going out context. I always tell people three things you have to kind of experience with someone before you really know them. One is a conflict. If you two can have a conflict, and resolve it, then that's a lifelong friend. On top of that, if you're in a conflict, how this person reacts to your conflict, does he or she have your back? He or she even take the other side? Does he or she kind of distance themselves? Conflict. Second is when it comes to relationships, how they react to relationships. And third is deaths. When there's a death in their family near them or when there's a death in your family, how they react to that. Those three situations, if you experience that with someone, you can really tell if that person is going to be a lifelong friend or not. So what's the point of this rant? By seeing how this guy not just dealt with conflict, but was constantly caught in conflict? You want to be my friend? I want to be your friend. I kept getting a gut feeling to leave the situation, but it took me until the end of the night. So Craig did it correctly. You get that gut, you go, right? That's what Craig did. For me, what happened was, you know, the guy kept antagonizing everyone. He was on the verge of causing fights with bouncers, with other people in the club, etc. Eventually, we were at a club where there was actually a fight. It was like 10 Indians versus 10 guys from the hood. It was a big fight. And I was telling this guy, I'm like, dude, we got to go, man. We got to go. I think he didn't have a successful night with the ladies. So he felt like he needed to shoot more shots. So he wanted to go back into the bar, but in front of him was a big, big, big fight. No sense of danger. No sense that maybe he could get caught up in that fight. Literally the punches being thrown. I remember seeing one guy get caught straight in the face. It was a crazy fight. And they were all big guys too. But no, he just ran back into the bar. I told him, yo, stop. He ran back into the bar, ran through the fight to get back into the bar to holler at more ladies. Ridiculous. He also revealed to me sometime during the night that he's been to prison too. I'm not saying people who've gone to prison, you don't hang out with them. When there's too many things pointing to a reason not to hang out with this person, don't hang out with this person. So long story short, I really admire what Craig did. And I did something similar in 2016, but I should have left the situation a little bit even before. There were so many moments, man, we could have gotten into fights. Anyone that gets into situations like this, it's not worth it. Stick with a friend, friend who's constantly about to get you or does get you into fights. This was probably my favorite moment so far from season two. Okay, so the rest of the test, once Craig comes back, so this is the pool situation, right? Notice how Craig's trying to leave the situation too. He just want to get involved. And then unfortunately his friend gets attacked anyways, but he's fighting on his own terms, right? Oh no, he turns his back a little bit. So unfortunately that was not good. But notice that he knew his friend was gonna get him in trouble. So he's like, let me at least keep an eye on the action. So this part, unfortunately, there's nothing too much you can do when you're getting jumped like that. You just have to survive. And then this situation too, look at that. He grabs a chair. This was beautiful. He sort of is like, okay, let's not get hurt. If you really want to fight, let's one-on-one. -on -one. That was brilliant. Very smart. Again, just very street smart of him. He's the MVP in this. I'm such a big fan. He's like a friend I want in my life, man. I really like this guy. So Ultimate Self-Defense Championship Season 2 did a really good job including this guy. Craig, if you see this, please comment. Obviously, you could tell from this that since Craig isn't really trained, he made some mistakes in the fighting department. But still, his situational awareness, his de-escalation abilities, and his general street smarts, I would argue, were 
far above the other two that we saw in this. I love when our paradigm gets shattered. You would think martial artists would be so good at this, but it's not that clear cut. For those of you that watch my channel, you guys know that this is why I love bringing you guys this stuff. The most paradigm changing stuff. We don't want to be mainstream. We want to find the indie paradigm changing things. So obviously there's a lot more to this video. Watch how the karate guy did, the Shaolin guy did, the active UFC fighter, right? There's a lot of other people who test themselves in this situation. So I don't want to give away how the other people do because I want you guys to go support Ruckus and go to Ultimate Self-Defense Championship Season 2 and watch them. If you like my coverage, if you want to see more, make sure to press like, press subscribe, leave your comments, man. There's so much to talk about. So leave your comments. Another prompt I'll give you guys is tell me about a self-defense situation, a time when a friend potentially got you in trouble, made a self-defense or any sort of situation worse. Let me know in the comments. I look forward to hearing your stories. Okay, guys, a lot more to come. Thank you guys so much. Shout out Jeff Phillips. Shout out Ruckus. Shout out the entire team. Ruckus's wife deserves a lot of credit, right? So shout out the entire team that put this season two together. So much more to come. And shout out all the contestants. Shout out channel members. And we will talk soon. Bye-bye.